Hey everybody, this is Chef Josh Ramirez with the Parsifal Project. Uh, normally we combine music and food together, but uh, I'm coming to you from my home in DuPont during the quarantine, so it's just me today, and we'll uh, do a little bit of some food inspiration for you to uh, do with your family as you go through this quarantine with everybody together. A little shout out to Badlands Play Space for organizing all these videos, thanks so much. All right, so we'll get started today. We're gonna to do a little bit of handmade cavatelli. I think it's a really fun project to do with your family because there's a lot of possibilities in terms of making shapes that I think the kids will really enjoy. Um, I myself really enjoy finding all these different tools to make different shapes. So let's get started with the dough. Pasta dough here is going to have two different types of flours. First flour will be a semolina flour. Now this is a hard durum wheat flour a little bit coarser grain or normally a coarser grain than you find a, a normal flour and a lot of gluten that's going to give the pasta the structure that it needs to have a little bit of bite. The other flour that we're using in equal ratio is uh, zero zero flour. This is a soft wheat flour, um, really, really fine grain. And this just gives a nice uh, texture balance to the, the semolina flour. If you don't have those double zero flour, you can use regular all purpose flour for this project. Uh, 150 grams of the semolina and 150 grams of the zero zero just for this demonstration recipe and Just weigh out the 150 here of the semolina And then just to make things go quicker here have the uh, Zero zero flour already weighed out And then I want to just give this a little mix together we're going to hydrate the flour with um, really hot water and we're going to hydrate to a ratio of 50%. So we're going to tear out, this is 300 grams now, that's 150 grams of each flour. Tear it out and then we'll add the hot water by weight. And like I said, if you don't have a, a scale at home, you can use 150 grams is about a, a cup of flour and you know so a cup of each of those flowers 150 grams of water obviously is just 150 milliliters but i'm just going to use the scale because i find it easier so a little bit of like a maybe a tablespoon or so of olive oil it's two percent if you want to do it by weight and obviously you scale it up as you scale up the recipe. So just to start this dough, I'm gonna use the fork just to make a little bit of less mess on my hands as well. Tip it out onto your work surface. We're gonna knead the dough for about 10 minutes, I would say. Here's the dough, uh, just not well worked yet. You put your finger in and it holds the shape of the finger. So we're just gonna to continue to knead until we get a, a much more fine dough and it's going to be a lot more elastic as well. So as the dough develops, you're going to notice that it's starting to uh, become more and more elastic. And as you do it, you can test throughout the way. Put your thumb in there. This one, you can still see the thumbprint last a little bit too long. You want to see it spring back pretty quickly and almost look like you never touched the dough. So, All right, so here's our dough looking pretty good uh, when you touch it. That dimple springs back almost immediately. Don't really see any evidence of it. And that shows you that the gluten has uh, developed enough for this stage. Dough is really tight right now. If you tried to roll this out or make any shapes with it, it's gonna wanna just contract. So I'm gonna let it relax for a little bit. I'm gonna take uh, some plastic. You can use plastic wrap or a little grocery bag that you have um, from the market. And then you're gonna let this hang out for about an hour. You can let it rest for longer than that, but in an hour or so it's ready. I have another one prepared just to make uh, this go quicker. You need a knife, it doesn't have to be super sharp. And we're just gonna first uh, clean off this work surface. And we're gonna just cut off a small portion that we want to work with to begin with. If you're working with your entire family, you can make a whole bunch of these portions. And this is the this is the fun part where you get to, to play with it almost like it was Play-Doh. And yeah. So we're just going to make, just like Play-Doh, we're going to make a snake. And we're going to make the snake uh, 
about the thickness of, oh, I don't know, your thumb or so, something like that. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit of flour and I have a sheet tray here just lined with a, a cloth so that the finished pasta doesn't stick to anything. And we're actually gonna, you can make this pasta, you can bulk up on it. So if you wanted to make a whole bunch of this and have everybody in your family working on making pasta, because it is a, a little bit labor intensive, but not too terribly. You can make a whole bunch and put this whole pan in the freezer right after we're done working with it, freeze it, and then if it won't stick to each other, you can just pop it out of the freezer, put it into a bag or a Ziploc or a, a little plastic container and keep it in your freezer for, I don't know, indefinitely. So we're gonna cut out little pieces of the pasta. So it's almost gonna look like uh, gnocchi. And you want all these pieces to be relatively equal so that pasta cooks all together at the same time. I have a whole bunch of tools over here that I'll just show you all different ones that you can use. And the fun part is you can just go around your house and find all different things to shape the pasta on. You can use things like a slotted spoon, a uh, little strainer or colander. You can use cheese graters. If you do have a, a special gnocchi board or a, a butter board, you can use that. This is uh, just wood that has ridges on it. But really anything that has texture is gonna allow you to make different shapes with the pasta. So I'm gonna show you just a few here and then I'll give you a close up in a second. But I'll, I'll start out with the traditional uh, gnocchi board and show you how to shape these uh, pasta. You're just going to take these little pieces Put it right on the board, take your thumb, push down, and they just pop right off. So you just roll it off the board. Like this. And this is the fun part, for, especially for the kids. It's really easy to do. You can't really uh, mess it up. And then you get these awesome cavatelli shapes. I don't know if you can see it, but you know, the, the little, almost like shell on the inside and then the texture on the outside. You take your thumb and you just roll it across the board. You get the really traditional shapes like that. I'll do one more here for you. This part's really quick. And then here's something like a slotted spoon or anything like, you, like I said, if you find around the house, but it gives you just different unique shapes. So you get a much different looking pasta at the end. I'll do one more shape here for you. Let's use the, the cheese grater this time. See how this one works? I've never done this one before. So obviously a little bit finer texture than the slotted spoon. But super fun, really easy to do. Here's the strainer. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this on the camera, but you get, kind of looks like, almost like a cooked squid shape using the strainer. So that's pretty much it on creating this type of pasta. You'll find out as you um, create the, you know, create the shapes and actually shape the, the individual cavatelli. Sometimes they're called gnocchi, sardi. That part goes really fast. It's really fun. Um, whether you're alone like me uh, in quarantine and just making them by yourself or you have the whole family helping you out. Later. In terms of cooking, you can cook these straight away. Um, or you can cook them from frozen. If you're cooking them straight away, you just need a, a, a pot of really rapidly boiling water, really heavily salted, the water should taste like the sea, and they're only gonna need about, um, you know, maybe three minutes, two to three minutes. If you are uh, cooking them from frozen, it's just gonna tack on a couple of extra minutes. Um, serve them with any sort of sauce that you like, tomato sauce, cream sauce. You'll notice that all the different types of shapes and textures that you get uh, as you make the pasta, is going to hold the sauces uh, a little bit differently. So that's the fun part of discovering new shapes and see how they interact with the sauce. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this has brought you a little bit of entertainment and fun um, during the quarantine. Thinking about everybody, hope all of you are well. Special shout out to the restaurant community and uh, the community of musicians. Like I said, my project combines both the, the musicians and, and the cooks. And so thinking about both of those groups, if you can help them out, help them out. Uh, hope this message finds you well and enjoy cooking.